In earlier programs, we talked about the suite of software that make up the FL Digi NBEMS system. Uh, the four softwares are FL Digi, FL Message, FL Wrap, and FL Amp. In today's program, we're going to take a specific look at FLMSG. This is the messaging program, and it's really the heart of NBEMS. We're looking at the first page of the FLMSG user manual. On that page, it shows you this default interface that you will see the very first time that you start up FLMSG. Basically, it's wanting you to choose between a service agency and simple interface or a communicator expert interface. Uh, if you've not already done this, you always want to choose the expert interface. Uh, but I want to show you if you choose uh, the simple interface, this is basically what it looks like. Uh, the simple interface is really designed for non-communicators or served agency personnel uh, that just need to get in to make new messages and edit messages and view messages, and they aren't actually going to be operating radio equipment. Uh, so this is just a simple interface to let them get in and do those functions. When it comes up on your desktop, one of the problems you're going to have is how do I get to the full interface that I normally want to use? To do that, just click on Tools and come down to Expert Dialog. When you click on that, it actually opens up the full interface. To make it stay up every time you start it, go to the Config tab and come down to User Interface and check mark the box that says User Interface equals Expert. And then you can close all of the boxes. And what will happen is that selects the full interface to start when you start FLMSG. Uh, so I'll start it up, and you see now the full interface comes up, and that's what we want to have happen. The next thing we want to do is look at the configuration for FLMSG. And again, we're going to go back to the Config tab, click on that, and go to the first item, Personal Data. This brings up the config uh, box that has the tabs across the top of all the items we want to uh, look at. Uh, the first one of personnel, just put in your call sign, your telephone number, uh, go ahead and put your full name in, uh, your address, uh, city, state, and zip, and your email address. Uh, notice there's no punctuation, just spaces. Uh, for the next tab, date and time, uh, this just lists how uh, FLMSG is going to label your files. And I do it by having year, month, date, and then I like to have hour and minutes with local time. Of course, Z is for Zulu, and uh, UTC is uni Universal Coordinated. Uh, so I just like to have uh, the uh, time set up in this configuration. You can uh, select it to do any way that you wish. Uh, for files, I suggest you configure it like this. Uh, when you first start using it, again, it's good to have this open folder when exporting. It will open a folder and show you where it's putting the file. As a new user, this is a good option. Uh, after you come, become more familiar with where the files are set up in the system, you might want to uncheck that. But for now, leave it checked. And naming the files, it's going to use your call sign and the date and time if you check these. And you can have a serial number that's sequential after that. I basically just use call sign and time and date. That tells me basically what I need to know about the file. Uh, for the Mars roster, just leave it as is and just leave the word wrap checked at 72 characters. will be just fine. Uh, for radiogram, you can click on that. You can set it up this way. This will normally be uh, probably one. Uh, it's just showing the next number. I've, I've set up one before, so my next one will be two. But you can leave it as one. Just set it up like this. Uh, for ARQ, which stands for Automatic Repeat Request, uh, just leave all of these items as they are. Uh, the first uh, four items here, check mark all of those. I want you to uncheck the Sync Modem to FL Digi, and I want you to check Change Modem to Auto Send. This is an optional thing, these last two items. What this will do if you set it up like this is when you go to use FLMSG and auto send a file, it's going to use the modem that you have listed and it's going to force the modem and FL, um, FLDigi to change over to that before it sends it. 
Uh, so it's going to default to whatever you choose here. Uh, the reason I like to do it this way is I may be having a digital conversation with somebody in Olivia, but I want to want to send them a file. I want to send it to them an MT sixty three two K. 2KL, which is our standard uh, file modem. Uh, and so I can have that set up over here, and then I'll actually be able to see the total amount of time it's going to take to send the file to. And when I hit auto send, it will convert uh, FL Digi over to that modem and then send it. Uh, so I like this configuration, uh, and that's how I suggest as a new user you start out with. And, of course, of course, we have the UI, which is our last tab, and you're familiar with that. So that's basically the configuration setup for FLMSG. Uh, and at this point, uh, the system is ready to go. So now that FLMSG is configured, let's load a form and show you how to auto-send it. Looking at our interface, we have a blank form currently up. You notice it has a .b2s as the extension on it. Uh, to load the form that we want to use, we're going to click on Form and come down to ICS. The form we want to use is an ICS-213. Uh, that's one of the most popular forms that's used for emergency communications. So now you can see we have a new uh, .213 uh, form listed as ICS-213. I'm going to load an existing message that I had already uh, written up earlier. So I'm going to come to File and go to Open, and it's going to take me to the ICS folder in the Messages, and I'm going to load the number two one here, Digital Training Current Versions. I'm just going to open that. That loads that old message uh, into the interface. And basically, at this point, it's ready to go. I have the correct modem chosen. It tells me it's going to take 42 seconds to send it. And all I need to do at this point is hit Auto Send, and it will start to send it. Now, if I hit Auto Send, and I'm going to do it right now, it'll come up and start transmitting. And you'll notice that there's our RSID, and then you can see it's actually starting to transmit the signal. And you come up here and look at our outgoing information here, and you can see that it's actually sending the file. So while it's doing that, let's take a look at the file structure for sending an auto-send message. One of the confusing things about FLMSG transmissions are all the different file formats that are used. When you hit auto-send, this is the process of actually what happens, and we're showing the file extensions for each type of file. So you start out with a .213 file, that's your ICS-213 FLMSG file that you see in the user interface. Uh, that file is converted into a wrapped file, the .wrap, uh, and that's the file that's actually transmitted over the air via the radio. On the far side, the receiving station receives the wrapped file that has the extension .wrap. And then if it's a valid file, if the checksum works and it doesn't see any errors, it opens it up as a 213 file in FLMSG. Uh, if FLMSG isn't open, it will pop open and populate that. And then if you have uh, your settings set up to do it, it will then open up an HTML file in your browser, and that shows you the beautiful final form that you can print out. Uh, so these are all the possible files, the, the dot .213, the wrap file, and the HTML file. If you kind of understand this whole process, it goes a long way in when you're looking at the files in the NBEMS folder and what they actually are. So. The NBEMS file locations, these are on the various different types of computers, Windows XP, Windows, Linux, Puppy, uh, Macs. I want you to look at the Windows. That's what I have. And on your uh, C drive, uh, under Users, and then whatever name that you're logged in at, you'll see a folder called nbems.files. Uh, that's the file folder that carries the content for all of the messaging that you do. Uh, at the very bottom, you'll see it has form files that are located in the ICS Messages uh, folder. Uh, you'll have template files in the ICS Templates folder. You'll have the viewing files. These will be just in the ICS folder.
and then you'll have the wrap files there's a separate wrap folder and there's a send and receive so that's how it's laid out let's go take a look at that on my computer the way to get to your NBEMS folder is to go to file and come down to folders and then come down to the NBEMS files when you click on that folder it's going to open up the nbems.files folder and show you the content and you can see here that we have listed for the nbems folder uh, arq csv custom flamp ics uh, there's three of my custom files that folders that i have in here so just ignore those uh, a temp folder transfers and wrap uh, so if we look in the ics folder uh, basically we see messages and templates so let's open the messages folder now this should look familiar to you these are the 213 extensions so we know that that's an ICS 213 file and you can go down and look at the different messages and look at the extensions uh, so if we come back to ICS uh, you notice that we have HTML files uh, when you open up the browser uh, it does automatically save you a copy of the HTML file so you can look at those and tell uh, that that's going to be uh, a browser file that you can open uh, for final printing uh, the other thing to look at is if you come down uh, to the wrap folder and we'll click on wrap uh, notice there's an auto received and send uh, you can look at the received and you can see this is what the wrapped file looks like uh, when you receive it. Uh, it has the command to extract it, uh, and these are the files that I've received. So this file comes into my system. Uh, it's unwrapped, turned in uh, to the 213, if that's the particular form it is. And then from that, the HTML file is created in the browser. So now when you look in the NBMS uh, folder, you can kind of have an idea of what you're looking at when you look at the different files. So now that you understand where the FLMSG files are located at, let's look at the file menu. I'll click on file and you can see we can start a new file, we can open an existing uh, form file, and then we can save and save as once we've uh, made any changes or created it uh, and actually save that file. Uh, the other things we can do is we can wrap uh, import and export. So if we wanted to take this 213, we could export it out as a wrapped file, uh, which is what's done in AutoSend, but we could manually do it and then just drop that file into FLDigi and manually send that if we wanted to. Uh, if we had existing wrap files, we can import them. Uh, let me show you a quicker way to do that. It's actually a little bit more fun. Uh, if we went to our wrapped uh, uh, folder and went to our received, and these are all my uh, received files, I could just click on uh, one of these files and drag and drop it into this blue window here at the top. And when I drop it in there, it would actually load that file uh, uh, in here. Uh, so you can see it loaded that particular one uh, in here. Uh, so you know, I could drop, drag and drop a lot of different files and it would automatically load those. And that's a lot quicker uh, sometimes than actually going through the process of using the menu. Uh, so this little blue window is a drag and drop window, makes it nice. Uh, I can do the same thing with the uh, ICS files. Uh, I could go to my messages, and then just go to any of these. Uh, I could pick this number one and again drag and drop it into the blue circle and it would load that particular message. Uh, so uh, it makes it a lot easier uh, to move files around if you use that method. Uh, so on the file menu, uh, that uh, covers all of the items in that. Uh, one of the other things that I wanted to show you uh, is using templates. So if I was using this 213 form and I was going to be sending out to the same topic uh, from me, uh, I could just take and basically delete uh, the things that would change every time, uh, including the content of the message. Uh, and just keep the things that I needed. Uh, my name would stay the same. Uh, so that I could turn that into a template. So I could just go up to this and save as, and it takes me to the templates folder. Uh, and then I could just give it a name uh, instead of default. Uh, so let's uh, call it uh, uh, my test 
for net and I'll just use that to be different and then I save that and uh, so now uh, if I've got uh, a form loaded let's say I've just got a, a new form here to clear it I could go to my template and then load a form uh, choose the one that I want to use uh, in this case is my test for net you notice that the extensions a dot 213t so I know that's a template for an ICS 213 form and when I open that it would load that into the existing uh, slots there so I don't have to retype all of this every time and that's really handy if you're doing uh, something where you're sending a lot of messages uh, out uh, to the same thing in my case it's the digital training net our ultimate objective with using FLMSG is to be able to have a form that is comes to our browser and looks just like the form that our client or end user is used to seeing. I hope this training has been helpful to you in learning how to set up, configure, and use FLMSG.